Um, okay, get some confirmation on exactly where that match is. But we should be already underway in that match. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be, if we're going to be taking a quick break or not, or if uh, our current streamer is good to continue on with the broadcast here. Well, it's probably better to just keep on going with the same broadcast, so. Let's get into this next one. Um, I do believe we're going to be having a uh, swap up of casters. However, Demarsh is going to be leaving and Mr. Fiery Rage is going to be coming in. So thank you for Demarsh uh, for the cast. And we will see you, I believe, next weekend for some more casts here. Thanks as always. And welcome, Fiery. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. It is 9.06 a.m. Got a little bit more sleep. I am ready to cast this uh, Seed 4 and Seed 5 matchup that we have here. Bob versus Thanks, guys. I believe they already played the first map, and we missed out on a uh, Ryko SS. We, did they already... Did somebody SS this already? Uh, oh they Lord. played Nomad 2, and they did indeed SS. Ryko SS the uh, Nomad 2. That is... Uh... That's a very good score. That is uh, that is indeed a very good score on that map. Well, uh, not too much to say for that other than ridiculous score uh, from Raikaho on that map. Um, not too surprising though, Raikaho, one of the best players on this team for Bob. Um, and in general, just a really, really solid player. Uh, very good all-rounder as well. So not too surprising that we see him go in for that map and do so well on it. Um, and unfortunately for Thanks, guys, that actually means a first pick gone awry. That was the first pick for Thanks, guys. Uh, and they unfortunately did lose it. Uh, so Bob taking the first pick breakpoint against them. We do have info on the bands as well. It's a Nomad 1 ban from Bob and a Nomad 3 ban from Thanks, guys. So we can go ahead and get those put in and then get uh, this hidden 3 selected here for Bob as their first pick. We've seen this uh, hidden 3 pick quite often recently, and we've seen just how... Uh... Oh, it's oh, not hidden three. Time three. It is My actually bad. DT3. We... Hidden 3 was uh... playing in the lobby for some reason, but it's actually DT3 is the next pick for Bob. This is Bob's first pick, and they are currently up 1-0 after that initial break point. So uh, this also makes sense. I mean, very speed-focused roster here for Bob with Keeg, Nynerick, Reiko, all very, very good speed players. I think Lucrece just sort of filling on this map, which is a custom in this round, custom mapped by Nightless for this round. Uh, kind of what you expect from Bell Time 3, however. Lots of bursts all over this place. Lots of triples, 5-note, 9-note, 7-note bursts all throughout the map at about 270. 263 for this map. We'll be, see, we'll be seeing uh, Keeg drop the FC. Cedric does trade it. Pogger CZ as well. So still combo advantage pretty massively in favor of Bob here in the early stages of this map. Not really an awful lot to say. Bob still holding on to those double FCs. Lucrece recovering the combo very nicely. Meanwhile, on thanks guys, Flash that and Swick holding on the high combos for their team, but Cedru and Pogacizi on the recovery. Cedru struggling a bit to find a solid combo on this map. Lucrece is going to find a miss. It's going to take more than that. Keeg as well. It's going to take one of the FCs on the side of Bob in order for this score gap to really start shifting over. I 
And unfortunately, the comfort level for both Raikou and Niner is very, very high on a map like this. Um, and you can kind of see it in the accuracy there. 99.5 for Raikou, 99% for Nynerik as well. And so even if those combos do trade, the 97% FC for Squeak and the 96% Reverse Choke for Plaste, not going to be doing as much as those scores would be with higher accuracy. So uh, this is a big score lead already with not nearly as much potential to go back over to Thanks Guys as it usually would. And I think at this point it's safe to call it Bob going to be up 2-0 here after the first round of picks for either team. I was going to say, it was about to get a bit dicey there since Flash Day and Cedri were still holding on to combos, and I believe the score gap was actually decreasing, but Flash Day with a slider break at the very end, Cedri missing. It's going to seal the deal, Bob, 2-0. Consolidated break point for them. Four S-Ranks in the lobby on this one, though. Absolutely crazy act from Raikoho and Nynerik on that map. And uh, now that we've got everything sorted, we can uh, rearrange the colors there, get that picked up to Team Red instead of Team Blue. And now we have a, uh, a fully correct map pool screen here with the first pick for Thanks Guys. Unfortunately, not going their way. An early 2-0 start for Bob after the first two picks for either of these teams. And I think Bob, with a little bit of a better read on the matchup, picking into the speed and stamina and... Unfortunately for Thanks Guys, not having the best read into the overall skill set of Bob versus them in particular, because I, I think looking at the scores for these teams, you really do want to see Thanks Guys kind of ban out some of the high BPM speedy stuff. It it's kind of odd, because in qualifiers, Bob had very, very poor speed scores in comparison, losing the DT1 and DT2 by about 400k each in comparison to the scores from Thanks Guys, uh, but clearly showing that that's not really indicative of their overall skill on speed maps. Uh, getting a three-way full combo on the Nomad 5 in, uh, or excuse me, actually, uh, not playing the Nomad 5 in the round of 16, but I mean, obviously with the scores they have here looking very, very solid on these types of maps and still having pretty good scores on speed in the round of 32 with uh, three-way 8900k for them in DT1. Uh, full combos for Raikaho on both DT1 and DT2 in round of 32. So generally a team that can pick into the speed and be completely fine on it, uh, as we've seen here. And now for Thanks Guys going into something very different, which I think can work pretty well for their roster overall. But again, is a really interesting pick looking at the maps that these two teams have played against each other so far. It's the Hard Rock 1 for Thanks Guys as their next pick. Well, the aim... The aim component maps usually are just RNG in general, you know. Sometimes you can you can go in and be completely confident in your aim. Next thing you know, uh, you're 15 missing it, which is just kind of unlucky. I guess they're sort of banking on that, thanks guys. Trying to see, you know, whether or not the aim is feeling necessarily good for Bob. With how Raikaho has been playing, I imagine he should be fine on this, but... Maybe banking on the other members not having as confident of aim currently. We'll see how it plays out for them in any case. Get into the first chorus. See who drops the first miss here on these jumps. Uh, no one, as a matter of fact, will be dropping on those jumps. That's actually kind of surprising. Usually we've seen a couple of drops during that first chorus, but both, both of these teams looking really confident on this right now. 
Right now, accuracy advantage in favor of Bob off the 99% from Krez and Raikaho. Liability going to be the first one to drop at the most unfortunate place, I think, imaginable. That already handicaps his score to around 650k. And unfortunately, during the slower section as well, right? I mean, none of these jumps in the slow section are really all that easy. You have nerves, you have swing rhythm to deal with. And so, uh, unfortunately for Liability and Sweek now, uh, Reiko is going to match the break from Sweek at least. But uh, yeah, those misses during the slow part are really, really rough for anybody, given how low the spacing is. Liability going to find another drop. Going to be traded, however, with Satono, Diamond, and Reiko. Sweek also finding another break. So it is two full combos to two for both of these teams, Pogresuzzi and Luciano with the full combos for thanks guys. Krez and Suwagi with the full combos for Bob. Suwagi also known as Dragbit3, that is a name change for somebody who you expect to do very well on this pick and who might have to carry it if Bob hoped for a break point on this one. Krez finding the drop there. Luciano and Pogresuzzi still holding for thanks guys at the moment. Sweek and li Liability really not having the best of times with the back half of this map to be expected on a pick like this and as we get to the biggest spacing jumps on the map liability gonna find the first drop matched by suwagi instantly at Pogger CZ to hold for thanks guys into the ending and he's gonna have to carry as the rest of the team has zero combo right now Satono Diamond and Raikaho both on recovery combos here and it's all on Neshpi to carry this for the team he finally does find a miss, though, during the biggest spacing jumps, and Raikaho, still holding the co recovered combo for Bob, is going to secure them the point, actually, along with Satono Diamond holding far enough into that big spacing section to find the extra bit of score Bob needs to take a 3-0 lead at the start of this match on a second break point in a row. That combo from Raikaho is absolutely crucial at the very end of this map here. Not having that combo, that would have been thanks guys point off of the back of Neshpi, but unfortunately, not going to be enough. The overall team consistency on Bob, just much better than thanks guys on that pick. Having all their members above 600k points. Now it's back to Bob to follow up with the next pick. I think at this point, Bob just kind of has open, right, right, open pick of all of the maps out here. Um, they've already won on speed. They've won on flow aim and streams, and they have won on regular aim as well in Hard Rock 1. Now they're just going to keep picking into speed, though as uh, the DC3 pick worked out pretty well for him. Picking in now to Double Time 2 Existence by Soundholic. This is the Mirage difficulty. Uh, I believe recently qualified this weekend, which uh, would force an update from some players, but uh, shouldn't be any major changes to the map. This one focused largely on two things, on finger control and on stamina at 237 BPM, I believe. Uh... Actually, no, 232 BPM for you're these also, players. You're also talking about how this was qualified. That was actually a different set. That was a Lucent set that's qualified. What? That does have this diff included in it, but it is a completely separate set. This is rigged. This is rigged. This is the same set with the same map just by a different mapper. Oh, my God. <laughs> and right, so the same top diff. Yeah, same top diff, different map set by... Uh, different mapper, but uh, the exact same difficulty included in it. Uh, that is that is rigged. It's rigged. All right, whatever. <laughs> well, this diff not qualified. Uh, luckily for anybody playing the tournament, no updates to this, so it's good for them. So it will be the exact same. In any case, we'll be seeing uh, Keeg Shield coming in for Bob. Shield known for massive finger control man on these double time picks. We'll see how he plays on this. Yeah, Shield is, uh, like you said, very, very good uh, finger control double time player. Also has really, really solid DT stream stamina, which is something that is pretty necessary for a map like this, as you can tell. Uh, out of the gate, both the finger control and stamina requirements on this are pretty high. 
does make for a relatively streamy DT pool. But something that Bob is uh, really happy to take advantage of here with a couple of very, very good in stream players on their team. Uh, Suwagi not necessarily thought of like that. Dragbit 3, Suwagi. Uh, not normally thought of as a speed and stream player, but certainly fine on the skill set overall. Uh, maybe not a person to pick it in 1v1s, but can fill in team tournaments like this. Of course, Keeg, Nynerick, and Shield, all very, very strong players in their own right on maps like this. For now, no one going to be dropping in the early stages of the map, so four FCs to four, just the accuracy advantage from Bob holding them across the, uh, or well, having them hold the baton for now. Will be Nesh P, Pogger CZ, the first one to drop, not answered by anyone on the side of Bob as we enter that stream. Suwagi almost missing on that stream, but just barely holding the gombo, which is what matters. Still the four-way full combo for Bob, however. Only drop so far to come from Hogger CZ at the moment. Everybody else on Thanks Guys still holding the FCs as well now. So be aware of that with that break in the middle of the map. The accuracy, however, does favor Bob by a bit. It's not a massive ACK lead, largely on shield. The player we expect to see the highest ACK out of on this type of map in general. But really dependent on any of these combos dropping for Bob. And unfortunately for Thanks Guys, it's going to come from them instead. Cedru finding that combo break. It's just Blast and Sweet holding onto the full combos for them now. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Swick and Flast, Swick not going to be able to hold onto the full combo. And Flasty now 1v4ing with this uh, full combo. Not going to be nearly enough as the four way full combo is still intact for Bob. Yeah, uh, this team score is kind of disgusting, to put it lightly. Flash Day going to be dropping the final FC, but, like, it it, it, it literally doesn't even matter at this point. This is just kind of, um... Okay, well, Nynerik is not going to be completing the four-way FC, but still, a uh, 4.4 million team score on that one. That is a team score. A pretty good score. That is, that is a pretty good score from Bob. Uh, I don't know that we're going to see a better score than that this weekend. As, uh, yeah, that, that team score is really ridiculous. Super solid scores from them overall on that map. Um, and this has been a really dominant start to this match. This is seed 4 versus seed 5, and it is 4-0 for Bob right now. So, excuse me, I don't know if it was necessarily preparation or misreading what they needed to pick into Bob or just not having the best of days for thanks guys but this match absolutely not going as expected and not going as i think they would have wanted it for thanks guys at the start of this one bob kind of demolishing the speed picks against this team and still able to win out on both nomad 2 and hard rock one here at the start and thanks guys opting to ban hard rock 2 was their second ban. I'm actually kind of surprised about that rather than them going for a ban like Nomad 5 or DT2 just based off yeah. of what we've seen right now. I feel like those two would probably have been better bans, but it, it, it's going to be Hard Rock 2, the small circle size map, which honestly, I'm not too sure... About. And there's the Hidden 2 ban. Goodbye, Hidden 2. We're never seeing this map ever played. Yeah, well, there are two matches left. There's two, there's two matches left. I'm going to hold out hope for that. Copium. Uh, copium. <laughs> Insane yeah, no, that, copium. Uh, that map is uh, way harder than it has any right to be in a uh, quarterfinals pool. And uh, due to the nature of the map, likely banned out by a lot of teams just not wanting to deal with a Rhythm Hell no mo uh, Hidden 2. So... An understandable ban there from Bob. When you are ahead, ban out the hardest maps in the pool. And just pick the stuff that you know you're good at. And, yeah, that's what I figured happened. Okay. Uh, yeah, they wanted to pick Hard Rock 2 instead of ban it. Yeah. Which, um, 
makes sense. Makes more sense than them wanting to ban Hard Rock too. Oh, very likely to get that ban rescinded and probably a ban on Nomad 5 or Double Time 2 instead. Uh, I'm going to just assume it's one of those two maps and kind of move on to talking about Hard Rock 2 now. Because uh, Hard Rock 2, I think it's a, it's a map that we can talk about a little bit here. Thanks, guys. Already picking into Hard Rock 1 and looking fairly comfortable on it, right? They do have some very good Hard Rock aim players on this team. And I think a team that... Uh, would generally be fine. Yeah, in general, I feel like this is probably the second best pick for them outside of just generic aim, which uh, unfortunately is now banned except for DT1, which don't really think is a good idea after the, uh, the DTs that we've seen so far. Yeah, this map, uh, CS 6.5 Hard Rock, uh, kind of light tech, as you can probably hear from the song here. This is Mama Yudofu remix of a uh, song by Hino Iska, now one of the featured artists in us. So this is officially featured artist music. Thank you, Hino Iska. Uh, love to see more featured artists get added in to the roster here. But yeah, light tech hard rock too, with a lot of slider aim, a lot of fairly big jumps, a lot of aim control required for this map, and then quite a lot of streams in between, but the stream aim in this not really a major requirement for most teams, I think. Uh, largely going to be struggling with the precision jumps on this map, as it should be. Unfortunately, because this is a remix, this is uh, not included in the featured artist listing, in case no! you're wondering. No! Actually, this song itself is not included in the featured artist listing, which is also kind of unfortunate. But in any case... Not like this. Oh, well. Hey, you know, more artists is always a good thing. Now, when's the Dragon Force FA coming out? When? Dragon Force FA when, guys? Dra Dragon Force FA when? Uh, never is the answer, but... Uh... Yeah, it's a good start to this map for thanks guys. Nobody missing uh okay, never mind. Traded miss between Luciano and Raikaho there. Yeah, that's probably what we're gonna be seeing a lot, is just a lot of these slider breaks. Krez finds one as well. These uh, sliders are uh, very tough to aim, and oh my god, we are seeing that in spades as liability, Pogger CZ, and Keeg all drop. So slight combo advantage never mind. Uh, it was slight combo advantage towards Bob, and now there are no FCs on the side of Bob. It's just Swick. And, then, and there goes the that. Show. Okay, goodbye, everybody. It's, it's back to combo lead for Bob, though, as Raikaho holding the highest combo in the lobby, uh, followed by Krez, both on Bob's side here. Highest combo for thanks, guys, right now on Luciano and Pogner CZ, about 150 down each from the combos that we see on the side of Bob. And Pogger CZ just missing on Ouch. air alongside ability right after that spinner, man. Uh, Luciano, very uh, clearly not happy with his performance there and gonna be missing on streams afterwards. This is why you don't write things in smoke during the break, kids. Don't do it. Um, yeah, unfortunately for thanks guys, this is another pick gone awry and this is likely to be 5-0 for Bob after this one with no real high combo to speak of on the side of thanks guys to combat the now uh, almost 300,000 score lead and growing for Bob. Yeah, and with none of Bob team members missing, okay, never mind, Key going to be missing, but it's just not going to be enough. There is literally no combo on the side of Thanks Guys, aside from Pogger CZ, which is just not enough to counter any of the three high combos that are present on the side of Bob now. And the score gap is now suddenly 600k, suddenly unrecoverable, 5-0 now for Bob and match point for them on, the ne on their next own pick. might I add. So they do get the next pick after this. How is, how is seed one versus seed eight closer than this match? What's happening right now? What's what's going on with this? This was uh this is 
How is seed four versus seed five this one-sided? I don't understand. Um, how is how is seed one versus seed eight going to be the closest winner's bracket match this weekend? This is absolutely not what Thanks Guys wanted to see. And uh, yeah, with no mod five still up, with double time one still up, this is looking already finished out for Bob. I'm expecting to just see no mod five get picked here. And based on how the other two speed maps have gone, I mean, this is just disaster striking for thanks guys as all three of their picks go wrong and now they need to pull out a break point on a skill set where we have already seen them just not have a good time straight up not having a good time on the speed maps for thanks guys yeah well we're gonna have to see what happens here maybe bob slips up but with how they've been looking on the previous speed maps that just looks very very unlikely getting into potentially the last map here. Thanks guys needing to take three break points now. Actually not three break points, but might as well be at this point. Well, I mean they actually do need to take three break points, right? They need to take this one and then they need to win two picks of their own and take two other break points in order to just force tiebreaker in this match. So they want to stay in winner's bracket. They need three break points at this point. Uh, they need to take all three back and win two of their own. So uh, this is a—it's a tough ask for thanks, guys. We'll see if they're up to it uh, as we get into this no mod five. I think probably the most breakpointable speed map that we have in this map pool. Um, there's not too much aim requirement, but all of the aim in this map is like really weird linear or polygonal aim that a lot of players have had trouble with for one reason or another in the quarterfinals. So. Uh, definitely a pick that I think players can do better on, even if they aren't speed players, and a pick that I think speed players might struggle on just because of that kind of weird linear aim that does find its way into this map. Unfortunately, for thanks guys, Sedru just having too much of a bad time on this pick for any of the full combos to do the work they need. Uh, Flasta's combo being matched by Lucrece with those early breaks happening at about the same time, uh, but Key got a much better recovered combo than Sedru can put up. See if any of the other FCs on Bob break, because they're going to need to at this point, and relatively soon as well, because Sedru is just not able to find a recovered combo right now, compared to everyone else, who is uh, not really having that much issue. Granted, uh, Netch P Pogger CZ on quite lower accuracy compared to all the FCs on the side of Bob, but Lucrece does drop again. Gonna take a bit more than that. Score gap is around just about reaching 300k. If we're gonna see a comeback potential, we're gonna need to see both the FCs, or at least Keeg and one of the FCs, drop here. Actually, not even, just one of the high combos on the side of Bob drop. And then having the rest of Thanks Guy's combo, and that is not what you want to have happen. Uh, Flash did just misses on a thing, I guess. Um, yeah, and this is the deal for thanks guys, is if these full combos don't drop basically right now for Raikaho and Nynarek, they are just not going to be able to take this point. Pogger CZ and Swick doing as much as they can here. Set Drew on a much better recovered combo than we saw uh, when he was having that much trouble earlier on in that map, but it just doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Bob really showing up here in the quarterfinals and far outperforming thanks guys on these picks putting up absolutely massive team <laughs> scores on basically every map this is it's not even necessarily bad scores 
for the side of thanks guys but what do you do uh, against 3.4 million from bob on these sorts of maps it's just too much for them to combat and bob in incredibly dominant fashion going to be moving into the winner's semifinals That's going to do it for the winner's bracket. Now we have the semi matchups in the winner's bracket. Pretty much all decided now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all uh, winner's bracket semifinals matches are decided. Just want to, before we get into that, say congratulations to Bob and good luck to thanks guys in the loser's bracket. Really solid match from Bob and hopefully thanks guys having a better time of the loser's bracket.